In the last video, we installed the Diode Dynamics Kit to give us color-changing daytime running lights, or DRLs. On newer cars with LED DRLs, the DRLs turn off while signaling in some sort of effort to make the actual signal light more visible. Personally, I never liked this feature. I actually had a few people over the last few years tell me that my headlight was out when it was actually just this feature. But since installing the RGB kit, I noticed an interesting quirk. The relay that controls these lights is actually connected to just the passenger headlight enclosure, which means that if I signal right, both DRLs turn off, and if I signal left, both of them stay on. Instead, what I want is for both DRLs to just stay on all the time. To accomplish this, all I need to do is run a new couple of wires to my driver's side headlight enclosure to the switch end of the relay. So let's get it installed. First thing we need to do is disconnect the negative side of the battery. So to do that, we're gonna lift up the liner, take our 10 millimeter socket and undo this bolt. And then we can take this connector off and leave it right there. Pop the hood and open it up. To make getting to that headlight clip a little easier, we're gonna try taking out this, hopefully it's just this one screw. Yes, easy. Set that aside. And now, with the air filter out of the way, we can get to this connector much more easily. Boom, there we go. And now that we have our connector out here, we can start to work on it. You can see that I already have finished the splice on this side, but we're gonna get rid of this splice connector because these splice connectors that the kit came with are awful. So according to the wiring instructions that came with the kit, on the driver's side, we're looking for a white and yellow wire and a white and brown wire. So the white and brown wire and the white and yellow wires are both right here. We're gonna actually take the pins out of this connector completely though to make this as easy as possible to work in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my mechanics pick and try to pick out this top cover piece right here. It comes out pretty easily without having to break it. Just be careful and slow and just slide it up out like this. Now we can see the pins from the top. The next step, is to remove this black piece of plastic. So how this black piece is connected is there's a tab up here that snaps into this white piece of plastic here. So we should be able to get it out by reaching under the white area and prying down like this. And then do the same on the other side. So we can just push down on it like this, working it from both sides, and there we go. Also at this point, going to remove the connector we installed in the previous video, just so that it's not in the way. And then we can see the blue gasket up here that we want to pull down as well. Now we can see the white and yellow and white and brown wires from the top. We'll notice that it's these two mid middle pins right here. So if you look all the way into the connector, we can see that the plastic tabs here are what's holding these middle pins in. So we can try to push back this white tab first and try to at the same time push this connector down to get that wire to come free. There we go, that's one. Push down the thumb, and then push it with the pick. And there we go. Remember which position both of these are in. The brown and white wire is closest to the green and white, and the white and yellow wire is next to this black wire. Well, we should just pull these out. Ah, there we go. And once we get them both out, we can push them out of the blue gasket and the black piece of plastic. There we go. And there we go. We also want a little more wire to play with. So we're gonna cut this sleeve as carefully and as far down as we can get it. And that should be plenty of wire to work with. The next step we're going to take is just to cut these two wires just like that. And then take them over to our bench so we can strip the wire and install our new wires. So these wires are, I think, 18 or 20 gauge wires. So we're going to use my wire strippers and strip them about that much. And then we can do the same to the wires that are in the, in the car. Next step is we're gonna cut two lengths of wire that can reach from this light enclosure over to the enclosure on the other side. So about this much looks good. So we'll just cut two lengths twice to this length. And then we can cut our second piece of wire to the same length. Uh, the wire I happen to have was 16 gauge. So we're gonna strip all four of those now. 
Now we can make the three-way splice between the wire that already existed and our new wire. But before we twist these up, we're gonna wanna grab some heat shrink or solder. The marine is important because the heat shrink itself actually has glue in there that will heat up when we heat up the wire. So before we begin, we're gonna slip our heat shrink over this wire. It's important that we do it on this wire, otherwise it's not gonna make any sense later. We might have already had to undo it one way. <laughs> and then separate the copper like this so that we can twist it with our other two wires. Now that we have our wires separated like this, we can twist one of the two areas like this and then bring over our new blue wire and twist the remaining two open ones together like this. And now we can twist all three of these together and then fold this back down and then slip our heat shrink over the entire thing. And while we're here, we're going to fix the ground wire that we already spliced into before and do it exactly the same way as these two ones are done. Since our kit's ground wire came with a male blade connector, we're going to install a female blade connector on the new wire that we're installing now. That means our new ground wire doesn't need to be as long as our black wires since it's not going to the other side of the engine bay. Installing this one's pretty easy. All you do is slip in the copper in like this and then take something like a vice grip and crimp the end just like this. Now we can connect this end back to the kit's male connector. Now we're going to take our heat gun and heat up the shrink wrap. Now that our heat shrink tubing is all good and ready, we should be able to push the plastic and the gasket back up into the connector. Then we can take the brown and white wire and push it through its hole. Make sure that these connectors are oriented this way with the thicker part of the metal facing towards the outside of the connector when installed. See it come through and boom that one snapped into place now we can do the same for our white and yellow wire and then finally our ground wire and there now they're all snapped into place and then take this clip slip it back over the connectors just like that and there we go we should be good to reinstall our connector so where i ended up connecting my grounds and positives on this side was this positive fuse connector up here with this wire and then down here i used both of these different ground points one for the controller and one for the relay. So this is the relay that I actually ended up using. All of them have numbers written on them somewhere or stamped into the plastic indicating what they do. On this side, we actually use white wires to connect to the enclosure and we connected them on post number 86 since that's the post that tells the relay to start pulling power from our power source. So we're going to disconnect that and add our two blue wires to this connector so that the relay turns on when either headlight is on. Now we can plug it back into our relay. But before we plug it back into our relay, we're actually going to upgrade to a different relay. It's a Panasonic brand relay that I picked up from DigiKey to replace this relay. This one's actually rated for high temp use and it gets pretty hot in the engine bay even if it's just sitting in the sun and not running. This one was one we picked up from an, just an auto parts store. But you can see that if we buy cheap ones, sometimes they melt like this one did. So now we're gonna swap all the connectors to our new relay. Starting with this one, which we know goes on 86 and that should be good. Before we tuck all these wires away though, we're gonna turn the car back on with the battery reconnected and make sure our lights work as intended. And it works. Last thing we need to do is tuck the wires away so they're not visible anymore, and that should be it. First thing we're gonna do is zip tie this relay up under this area. There's plenty of holes up here. You can already see I have two zip ties, one for the Bluetooth controller and one for the light driver. And we're going to zip tie the relay on top of that first component right up here. First thing we're gonna do is cut this wire loom I picked up from an auto parts store. So when we tuck the wires away, they're protected. And then we can roll the wires into the loom and then push them down the rest of the way through. Something I just noticed is that this wire should have been routed under this area, but it wasn't. And instead of undoing all the wiring we're doing, we're just gonna remove this eight millimeter bolt and then tuck the wire underneath this area. Just like that. And then reinstall our bolt. Then we can tuck our wire loom up and around the lines that are here. 
and the lines clips. We don't even need any zip ties since it being tucked back here is a pretty tight fit. And that should be good to go. Hopefully that helps solve your daytime running lights turning off when you use your signal lights. And hopefully this was a decent guide on how we did our wiring in the first place. If you liked this video, like the video. If you want to watch more of our content, please subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.